What's going on, everyone? So if you've been following along with this project, you know, last few videos have been all assembly, putting things together, got everything refinished, and now it just all has to come together. And I gotta be honest, that kind of gets a little boring sometimes. So today I wanna make something. Specifically, I'm gonna get these handlebars. That's right, Renthal fat bars, inch and one eighth, to work on that triple tree. So here are the standard handlebar clamps for the BMW R90 slash six. And these are just a pair of, you know, seven eighths bars that I had kicking around. Honestly, I've always thought that these things looked pretty good. The thing is, of course, that inch and an eighth bar won't fit in this hole. So you might think, well, why not just make the hole bigger? Well, the problem is that the studs that hold everything together, clamp it up, are really close to the bar itself. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them, but yeah, you can kind of see like the studs are right next to the bar. So there's no real room to hog that material out. But I have a solution. See, BMW likes to make things adjustable. And on the triple tree for this bike, there's multiple positions where these handlebar clamps can be put. You can see there, there's holes in front of the clamps. That means that I'd normally be able to move the whole handlebar forward by, you know, whatever that amount is. But I'm gonna use that for my own purposes. I wanna basically recreate those handlebar clamps. Where are they? Over here? Here. These ones here. And just make them a little longer, a little bigger, so that I can fit this bar, which is one and one eighth inch diameter. And fortunately, I have access to the equipment that we would use to make these things. Back in the winter time, I put out a video making rear set hanger brackets for an XS400, and they were CNC machined. I work with a, another local guy here in Rochester, and we've made a bunch of bike parts that are for sale, including mirrors and turn signals and an RFID lock. So I was thinking actually that this might be a good opportunity to kind of develop a new product, an off the shelf part that lets you mount a one and one eighth inch bar on an airhead BMW. So as with any CNC machine project, we're gonna start with modeling everything on the computer, but before even that, we just gotta do a lot of measuring. A lot of measuring. I know it's a camera on, I mean, I could screen cap this, but I don't know. You can see my hands moving around. This is better. This is better. Got my computer model all ready to go. You can see, definitely looks a lot like the original piece, except a little bit longer and I'm not gonna have quite as much roundness to the top. It's just, it didn't look right. Now the next step to turn this model into an actual piece of metal is, you can't just go from this model into the CNC machine. There's a separate step. And that's using something called CAM software. This is CAD software, computer-aided design. CAM is computer-aided manufacture. I'm not going to get too technical about it. I go into more detail with the rear set video. So if that's something you're interested in learning more about, check that out. But we're gonna hop over to the Moto Workshop where the CNC machine is. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get some work done. See you over there. You're gonna have to forgive the background noise of this machine, but this is the Haas VF2 Vertical Machining Center. It is a three axis mill. Uh, this one actually happens to have a fourth axis, but more importantly, CNC controlled milling, 20 tool changer. Uh, in the course of us creating these handlebar clamps, even though they're relatively simple parts to make, it's going to take nearly a dozen tools to do everything I need. 
Additionally, I'm going to be making some fixturing for it, but I will get into that later. First, I'm going to load up some material and I'm going to run my first program, which is the bottom half. Each of these parts is going to require two operations. First, I'm going to hog out the majority of the material, leaving a bit on the bottom that is essentially sacrifice material. It's not actually part of the part. I'm going to, in the second operation, remove that but it gives me enough material that I can hold onto it in the vise without it interfering with the tools. All right, we got the bottom half done. Now we're moving on to the top half. It's pretty much the same operation. Really, the only difference here is rather than drilling two holes in the sides for the studs to pass through, we're tapping those holes so that we can thread the stud in. Uh, otherwise, the operation is relatively the same, just the top is not as tall. After doing that first operation, we're left with a part that looks like this. Almost ready to go. Next step is I gotta remove this large piece of material from the top. The thing is with it being this kind of teardrop shape is how do you hold this so that it's in exactly the same spot every single time? That's where something called soft jaws comes in. These guys bolt onto the jaws of the vise in the machine. And you can see I've machined these to fit the contour extremely precisely. That way we know exactly where these parts are going to go. You can see I've got four slots here so I can gang these parts up and do them four at a time. We're going to begin cutting operation two of our bottom half. We're going to get rid of that material and we're going to essentially end up with the finished part. And finally, operation two of our top piece. This is a little more complex. You saw that the top had like a rounded over kind of feature. It's rounded in one direction and then has a chamfer around the entire outside. That is a chamfer that also curves in a couple different directions. Kind of a complicated operation. So we're using that ball nose, the same cutter that cut out the handlebar holes. We're gonna use that. We're gonna run it around over and over again, stepping down ever so slightly each revolution until we get a nice smooth surface. Not too shabby, huh? This is with a little Scotch-Brite and uh, just cleaned up some of the edges and stuff. Just need to throw some studs in there and see how it works back at base. Whew. Been a long day, guys. Sun is starting to set over there. But I finished doing the machining today and man, I just had to run back over here to my shop and see how it looked. You ready? OEM Plus, I guess you could call it. You know, they're similar to the stock ones, but just a little bit bigger. And I think the shape is a little more modern. It's not exactly the same, but you know, inspired by. But what I really want to do is get this thing on the ground and see how it feels with everything, you know, ergonomically speaking, in place. I am one step closer to starting this thing up. Last thing I really need to do is the throttle cable. And then I should be able to start the bike, if not ride it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. All right. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you